All right, everyone. Welcome to the next week in Nexus Gaming Series. This week we have a special co-host, uh, my cat. Instead of having just a blank, we've decided to upgrade to having uh, a cat as our co-host. So, unfortunately, my slideshow of cats of my cats doesn't actually work. So this will be our current co-host picture. But we got ourselves happy accidents facing off against Average Joes. And we're going to be kicking things off in Valskaya. Now, Valskaya is definitely interesting, especially with the changes that occurred with, with how XP is actually gathered. Now, if you don't remember or don't know, Blizzard changed XP from being about equal on the towers and the forts to being almost all behind the fort. So just taking the front walls really isn't going to get you nearly as much as it used to, which has created you know a discrepancy on how people play. But we're going to hit, go on into the draft and see how things are going there so far. Now. Like I was saying, people have changed how they draft because it is, well, sorry, they it changed how they play this map because of the original strategy was take the front wall, maybe get the well, go up, get the front and get the well. But if you're looking to get the XP edge, you need to take the fort. So there's a lot of different things you can do. You can take the fort or sorry. It, yeah, you can take the fort in all of the structures in mid. You can take the front wall and work your way up to try and getting the fort on top. You can avoid mid altogether, go straight for top and take that fort. Uh, and yeah, those are your, your kind of flex, flex macro decisions now, instead of take the walls, take the next walls and get the well and open yourself up to getting the next objective. Now, In case you were all wondering, uh, the co-host cat's name is Panda or Pandorica. Uh, Pandorica is her long name, but she barely gets called that other than Panda. Now, we had the hammer and the Asmodean. I like the hammer band. It's very good, especially when we see how terrible and how oppressive it is to play against a sergeant hammer. The... Urel and Decker Kane are very, very on point picks, I feel. Or for sorry, bands. Now the Genji did make it through, but Genji, I feel you can counter him a lot easier in a lot of ways than potentially even Urel or Hammer. Uh for map bands, we had a Dragonshire and BOE. So Dragonshire was the band there. So Panda is a rescue cat that my girlfriend got when she was a kitten, um, literally weeks old kitten. Uh, let's see what else. She's the monster of the house in that she's a princess and requires litter boxes that are more pristine than most people's houses actually are. Uh, and she has two other cats that she lives with. Now, the Diablo and Blaze, that's a very, very strong first rotation. You take away arguably the best tank in the game at the moment. You then pick up Blaze without your Rel being available, which means you have a lower quality of solo laner available, available on the side of Happy Accidents. Additionally, look at who they banned out just now. They banned out Leo. They're limiting the pool of solo laners even more. That's three solo laners off the table, relieving someone like a Sonya, a Mountvale, as your other choices. <laughs> oh man, Charging. That is great. That was, that is a great joke. 
Now, the Alex Straza, definitely a solid, solid pick here. Without White Mane and Decker Kane, taking up the Alex Straza was a prime time pick for Happy Accidents. They, they're basically playing kind of a game here of who they feel is more important in their meta or in their world. world. Is the support or the solo lane more important? According to Average Joes, they feel the solo lane is more important. And additionally, they did ban out the Deckard and the White Mane. And the White Mane ban is definitely very solid, especially when Happy Accidents pick up their support, denying them the ability to pick up what I'd consider the Tier 1 or Tier S supports. Uh, and on this particular map, Alex Draza is even stronger, so sacrificing White Mane and Deckard and getting that Alex Draza is definitely solid all around, in my opinion. Now, we're about to head on in here into this first series. I like both drafts overall. With, with the Liming Rainer, they have the slows. They have Blaze for additional slows for Rainer. Malfurion, who can get slows on his Moonfire, or he can just root them in place. Now, on the flip side, we have ETC as a solo laner which is very untraditional and we got Jaina and Genji. I like the Jaina and Genji combination because Jaina provides the burst. She often doesn't have the finishing potential on multiple targets. She can get multiple targets low but will not be able to seal the deal in a lot of cases. The Genji on the other hand can come on through, slice them up and turn them into some, you know, nice and fresh sushi that they can feast on after after they get those kills. The ETC is definitely a wild card here in that he loses the solo lane. He can survive because he has that slide, but he's not as tanky as someone like a Blaze in general, even in, in the team fights. However, he does provide a lot of value. There are several interrupts for Mosh, but I'm assuming we're going to actually see a stage dive here. We're going to jump on into the game now as we have all loaded in we got frostwind on the alex straza agar bombs on the Jaina. we got blue laguna on the muradin apparition on the genji and finally park 555 on the etc and that it's going to be happy accidents on the other side we got random task on the diablo tj the greatest 303 on Malfurion. We got Hazer on the Rainer. We got TA, or sorry, Tad MG on the Li Ming. In the top lane, we got Leficus on the Blaze, and that's going to be Average Joes. So we got ourselves a little bit of a spray battle going on. Unfortunately, sprays don't actually come with damage, but the spray off has begun lanes will be cleared up pretty quickly in the mid point but not not that much of a difference so rotation is going to be pretty fast and furious but this is interesting Hazer is actually in the bot lane against etc this is a very interesting change here they have Blaze in the top lane, so there's a difference. EU versus NA kind of meta here, where NA places their solo lane versus where EU places their solo lane on this map. And they've opted to actually have more more like a 1-3-1 a one, one rotation, it feels like. And a lot of times the, the reasoning is largely based on the camps, where you have the Merc camps and the belief on where it is important to place the rest of your heroes, uh, thus impacting your rotations in your solo lane. So taking a look at level one, Diablo did pick up the soul shield here, which is perfect against this team. We have the rejuvenation, ace in the hole, force armor, and new habits. So the force armor, this might be one of the few times I'd say someone has picked up force armor in a reasonable scenario. All the damage that Tad has to be worried about is basically ability damage between Apparition and Igor Bombs. 
that's all ability damage. The auto attacks are not anything to be concerned about, and thus a perfect choice here. That does mean that is going to be, you know, less damage overall, but it is going to be a lot safer overall, especially when you're looking at burst. Malfurion doesn't deal with burst all that well in comparison to other supports. What he does deal with really well is sustain damage. So the force armor helps negate the burst, which then means TJ can do the job of Malfurion of keeping him topped off during the sustain damage. Now, anything else out of the ordinary? We're not going to see th anything really out of the ordinary. We will see the perfect storm here and the new habits, as I mentioned before. Also, they opted instead for the fight or flight instead of behemoth armor and the deep roots. Souls to the flame uh, and dominant. So nothing, like I said, out of the ordinary. Both teams pick up their camps roughly the same time, which is very, you know, very good. You'll often find teams who mistime them and or don't even pick them up, creating pressure against them, making it much harder to actually get the first objective. <laughs> I've had it uh, confirmed in chat that sprays actually do do damage. So really teams need to be spraying more and I believe B-stepping is also going to give you a damage boost on the sprays. So we don't have Genji here. This is a 5v4 and random is taking up position. They should start getting as much damage in as they can. A beautiful stun from Lepicus and they'll have to back on out. But Blue Laguna will stay to ensure that they keep control of this. As the way this objective works is very different. In comparison, they'll back on out, give control over. And at this point, they'll be able to start taking it. Ooh, they just get Blue Laguna back on in there, keeping it contested. Random will have to come on in to knock him on off, but won't really be able to do too much in the meantime. They are racing for seven. Leficus is down there soaking it up. Lane will be pushed on in, and really they're going to go back and get their turret camp as well. So that's one thing that neither team actually did. Uh, or well, sorry, both teams do have their turrets, I believe. Uh, where is the other turret? Must be on Genji. There we go. Both teams got their turrets, but now it's actually going to be two turrets apiece. At this point, Blue Laguna will have to back on off and they will finally be able to start taking this up. Taking them a bit of time, but it finally pays off as they as they now have control of it. However, it is dead even between both teams. Dragon will be popped. Now there's a side across on Diablo. We have the Blizzard on top of Random and Random has taken a lot of damage. However, the sustained healing from TJ will keep him up. And there's ETC being brought to the other side. And to the other side is also his afterlife. But joining him will be Diablo. Apparition getting low. The heal will keep him topped on off. But the side of Average Dozer are looking better. And the roots from TJ303 will secure the kill onto a Blue Laguna. And it's a two for one trade. And this is very likely going to be the Punisher as well. Now, Blizzard coming on out, but Ager Bomb's going to take a lot of damage. Apparition trying to stay on the point. Blue Park going to be here rather shortly, but Diablo is back as well. Blue Laguna is not here yet, so it is a weak front line versus a full five man on the side of Average Joe's. Now, Random going to be going in, charging the slide across, but Park has nowhere to go now. The follow-up stun onto Frost and Blue Laguna is coming on in hot. His are taking a bunch of damage, but... Park will be the first to fall in this fight. Tad trying to get the arcane orb onto the backside, but not going to land. They don't get the stun from Blaze, but it's not going to matter because Tad comes in with a big boy calamity and blows Blue Laguna to another galaxy. So I'm really interested to see how Average Joes handle this. Like I mentioned earlier, the way the XP has changed does impact how teams have decided to macro the first protector. You can see they're they're almost a 10. So getting the front wall will hit them 10 regardless. And I think I, I like this play overall much better. However, you can see they actually missed the actual stun on the uh, structure or the disable on the structure, which is going to cost them a little bit. But... This gets them 10 and they can push in and now get the well. They're not going to get as big of a boost in terms of actual XP because they didn't take the forts, but 
this does set him up a lot better for the very next objective, which I think is a little bit better overall because they need XP to hit 10. Thanks for the raid, 2D. I appreciate it, by the way. I Normally, I can't get a, an opportunity during cast. A random task coming on in, going to bully a blue lagoon off, but doesn't have any walls to stun him into. And average Joes will back on off. We got the stage dive coming on in, but the beautiful route from TJ303 and the winter, or sorry, the, we got Jaina pumping out the snowman. Snowman going to be going down and, well, not going to be doing too much there. They burnt a bunch of heroics. They do pick up the camp. But I kind of like that they held their heroics on the side of Average Joe's. Yes, they gave up the camp, but this now puts them in a position for the next 30 seconds to be in a better fighting position than their opponents. Now, keep in mind, uh, we do have the stage dive, uh, the water elemental, the dragon blade, avatar, and a life binder. Other side, we have twilight dream, lightning breath, Hyperion, wave of force, and bunker. Uh, anything else out of the ordinary here? We do not have anything that's too crazy. And it looks like got the grill and kill coming on out and the adhesive of petroleum. If you watch Kala, uh, last night, Azariel was giving some blaze tips and one of them is crossfire all the time uh, was his, his choice there and not the grill and kill. So if you're looking for advice from GM players who are also offlane mains, well, that's pretty good advice to take there. So waves will be cleared on up. Or Jaina has completed and that fingers of frost, by the way, and she's uh, it's kind of hard to see how far she's actually in here. It looks like 10,000, almost 11,000 damage. Now, bot lane, oh, random coming on in. There's the knockback. The slide across and park will be fine. Random does try to charge on and get the overpower, but he'll just knock him through and hit him with some B steps, baby, because park is in the safety of his own fort. So we have the rotation. They're looking to catch one, someone out. TJ might be looking for the pain, but... We got a beautiful turn here from Leficus to actually protect TJ. The roots will keep him going. He does have to pop the pyro, but Park taking a lot of damage will be overpowered. They drop the healing, and this is actually a great, great turn here for average Joes. They make him burn the healing. They can go up to the top objective, and they have all their heroics. And they burn the water elemental, which means for the next 40 seconds, the top objective is going to be rather easy to contest. Terminal activated. Take control of it. So at this point, we're going to have the start of this. No one is actually going to go to the siege camp on the side of Average Joe's, which is going to give him a little pressure on this side of Happy Accidents. Now, they do have ETC soaking in the bot lane who can stage dive at any point. Leficus, though, taking a lot of damage. Random coming in to try and peel the stage dive on top. Is only going to maybe hit random task there. Tad trying to help with a random. Does have the wave of force to peel on back. But TJ's there. But it's not going to be good enough. Leficus does not drop the bunker in time. Apparition really low. The Hyperion on top of them has melted their HP pools, leaving it as a 5v4, but with a 5v4 that is arguably in the advantage of average Joes. Now, Leficus does need to go back and tap if he has it available. Blue Laguna coming on in. The blink will land, but say goodbye to good old Jimmy. The five-man silence might be enough. Blue Laguna getting low. Life Finder will come on out. We also have the Lightning Breath. It's not going to be good enough to actually kill him, but it will keep him rather low overall. Now, we will have Jimmy here in a few seconds. He peppered him, but then he... Uh, he didn't have enough people who were fans of Pepper. They complained to the wait staff and they sent Jimmy on out, packed his bags, because that was the last complaint they were going to accept. So it's still really even. I like this rotation from Average Joe's. They're going to go and keep up the soak. 
they have Hazer back on in here. Random task in an interesting position, looking to see if anyone pushes out the lane. They haven't, and ETC does have stage dive available again. Available again. No lightning breath, no twilight dream, so they do have an edge here. We need the bunker to get get there to save the day. Uh, we Dragon's going to be popping out. Frost and Wind means business. We got the orb stage. I'm going to be coming on up. The slide across park is stuck on that route. But the blizzard on top of random is going to be taking him down. Apparition coming in with the swift strike. Not going to be needed. Actually taking a ton of damage from Hazer there. They'll have to back on up and give up the protector entirely now. So, if they pick up any kills here, I'm very concerned for average shows. If happy accidents pick up kills here, because they're down in Diablo and they'll start staggering deaths. 16 is about to be hit. And once 16 is hit, if they lose someone, they can start pressuring the top keep even. All they need is one wave and they'll basically be 16 at that point. So they're now going to be marching their way on down here. They're going to be looking to actually take the mid structure rather than the bot. I do think this is a little awkward since the next objective is the bot lane. They only have another 30 seconds and only about 30% HP left on this protector, but they will take all the XP they can get to rush to 20 instead. Now you can see next objective will be rather even for both teams. Both have their wells available and towers, except one is missing a gate. This will start doing some damage. Ooh, they're trying to get to the well. Protector is about to drop here. 16 is not picked up. We don't have the root in place. There they go. This wall bang. The overpower. Stage I'm going to be coming on up. The silence, though, from TJ. But doesn't matter. Dragon Blade not caught in it. Apparition going to be trading on out one for one. And a random task going to have to back on off. Overall, this wasn't too bad. I mean, Dragon Blade is a long cooldown. A lot of cooldowns were used. They only pick up one kill, but it could have ended a lot worse for Average Joes. Now, this is still an even game. We have 16 versus 17. Genji's down a little bit. There's very little time for average shows to contest this. They can get on in here. Tad is over there. There is a wave of force ready to go. They're not going to pop it in time to actually knock him off. And Igor Bombs will walk away with the healing. So this is going to give him a leg up in the next team fight. Something you don't want to have when it's this late in the game. 15 minutes in, things start getting dicey as soon as members of your team start falling. Taking a look at what we have as well, we have 76 souls for Diablo after he perished. Uh, we have the Showstopper with the mic check. We have the Icy Fanes with the Northern Exposure. The Dwarf Launch and the Healing Static, a Life Unbound, and Draconic Discipline. Other side, we have the Moonland Harmony, the Nature Swiftness, Hellfire, Debilitating Flames, Paint Them Red, and Giddy Up. Also, we have the Mirror Ball with the Illusionist. Fuel leak and the heat treatment. They're looking for the big flank here. Agar bombs. It's not going to actually get stunned here. He manages to block all the damage. And there's the stage. A random task going to be peeled for by Leficus. And they're walking on back trying to escape here. Lightning breath coming on out. Trying to melt him. And the wave of force and the twilight dream are going to be popped simultaneously. But the only thing popping here is Diablo, except Agar Bombs almost does pop there as well. Blue Laguna coming on in deep. They only have a tower here to help protect them. The wall is gone, and they're looking to try and get Blue Laguna, and it won't be successful. They'll walk away. Happy accidents. And as you can see, RNG Jesus has blessed Agar Bombs this evening. So, it's still pretty even. 
they don't have a single fort down, but they also have yet to lose an actual keep. The good news is that they're not going to hit 20 on the side of happy accidents, which keeps this a 19 versus 18 scenario for a decent chunk of time. Really, they need to try and force this as soon as possible on the side of average Joes. The longer they wait, the less likely they will have of being able to fight a 18 versus 19 scenario. I mean, at this point, it's almost impossible for them to fight anything other than other than a 20 versus 18 scenario because ETC will be able to collect enough XP on top now or in mid and then stage dive in should he choose. On the other side, they will pick it up. Random task going for that wall stun will not get it. Lefik is coming on in hot with the jet propulsion will miss as well. And they're going to be looking for some XP off of these walls. In the meantime, Tad will be sitting on the point to keep it even up in general. But we're now looking at that 20 versus 18 scenario. At this point, however, they're going to have to pretty much give this up. The top is pushing on in, bottom is guaranteed, and they have nothing pushed on in to allow them to get the XP here. Plus, it's rather dangerous as they have no front wall. But with this protector, they will go on up and get the support camp simultaneously, which is a great call. There's not a lot of lanes to soak. They can only do so much, and now it's time to try and defend. It's going to be very hard. They basically need to give up this keep almost... Almost 100%. Unless they do something crazy here, Average Joes, they'll have to give up the key and they'll just have to work on making sure the game cannot end. Front wall getting annihilated here. They're all already got, got the entire front wall down. Only 85% left on this protector at the moment. And we do have Blaze pushing on in, trying to get that 20. It's a very interesting call. Stage up coming on in. TJ is going to take a chunk of damage there. And he's not going to be able to escape. And Hazer will not either. Apparition coming on in with the Swift Strike. Executing Malfurion. And this is likely to be game here. Oh no, TJ got stuck on his own turret and couldn't run anywhere. They're now marching to end this game. They have the two-man advantage and the protector. Protector at 30% and falling, but this core is falling faster. 70% and going. There goes random task from trying to stop them, but this core is going to be going down. Happy accidents have painted themselves a nice little victory here with a little bit of a, a rough start, but they come out ahead regardless. All right, let's take a look at some of those, some of those scores, or the stats to be more specific here. Now, the stats, Tad and Hazer top in the DPS in that game. Just a boatload of damage. Just a boatload of damage dished out. But Agar Bombs did keep up rather well. Uh, interestingly, Apparition is very low. But he did come in and execute people. That's exactly what a Genji needs to do. Execute him, get on out, and call it a day. Now, for total healing, Frostwind doubling the total healing done in comparison. And that was one of the issues I was talking about. Malfurion is not exceptionally good against burst and with Jaina dropping the burst damage it really comes down to how those people taking that damage handle the damage so someone like Li Ming had frost or sorry uh force armor did not die once some like Jimmy did have fight or flight which gives him the 25 extra armor when he pops it for three seconds helping Malfurion keep him up Diablo has Soul Shield, helping to keep him up as well. However, when it was all said and done, uh, Random Task was not able to be sustained through in a lot of those fights. 
falling and then it became really a 4v5 you can see that he he was executed pretty much um he was about 50 percent of the deaths for his team so they killed someone on the front line average joes had to walk away and they had to call it a day at that point and in terms of actual tanking blue laguna hitting uh, about 10k more in general and the numbers etc 61k and blaze barely actually tanking there one thing i didn't notice was really any any bunker usage that was notable now that is definitely a big pain point i feel like that was part of the issue the bunkers weren't being dropped appropriately which wasn't enough which could have been enough actually to turn those fights because a bunker saving random for three seconds could be the three seconds that that Li Ming needs to get a reset by dropping some more damage onto the heads of happy accidents. We'll be right back and we'll pop on up those replays in the meantime. 